Salima, how did you get onto YouTube? What a great question. It came from an old friend of mine. We bumped into each other and sat down for a little catch up. And she asked me that question. And I went through the story. And then I thought, hmm, this is a good place to, right here on YouTube is a good place to share where the story came from and how it came to be so that you know some of the history behind this particular channel and where it started, where it ended up during COVID and where it's, and it's, where it's going. So here it is. In 2010, just after my mom passed away, I was browsing around on YouTube and was sitting with a friend and we were Googling all kinds of things. We were YouTubing all kinds of things. And YouTube in that in those days, 2010, was a very different, um, very different platform. It was new. It was emerging, kind of like TikTok is now. And I noticed that there wasn't very much Kundalini Yoga out there. And by then I had finished my trainings and I was looking to teach and I thought this is a great place to have an impact to make sure that everybody, no matter what corner of the world they live in, had access to Kundalini Yoga. And so very quickly after that, very soon after that, I found out that my next door neighbor was a videographer and he and I were quite friendly. Um, and so he offered to videotape and I thought, oh, this is great. We picked uh, a date. It was beautiful weather. And along with that, in that video, that original video, Kundalini Yoga for the Spine, is my cousin Nadia and one of the friends that I had made at Lululemon. And Stephen had, Stefan had supplied the clothes. He said, yeah, no problem. I'll get that, get you all dressed up in white and let's do this. My cousin Farah did hair and makeup and we sat down early morning in the park at Trinity Bellwoods Park and we recorded. And that video turned into the basis of the platform. And really, to be honest, I published it, didn't think too much about it. I was busy with work. I was busy with my teachings, my live teachings. And then fast forward a few years, I ended up opening a yoga studio and I had access to this beautiful space. I had access to people who were interested in doing videography and lots of students who wanted to volunteer and participate in creating the videos. And so you'll see in 2014, 2015, 2016, there are new videos that were posted. And those were all students in the yoga teacher training program and were fun to work with and enjoyed the experience of being on camera. And we had a great time together. And then around that time, so 2020, just around the time of the starting to hear whisperings of this pandemic, I had this feeling that video and YouTube was going to be a bigger part of life. And we started to make plans on how to get that done. More weekly scheduling of video shoots, um, different people who to appear showing different abilities, um, different shapes and sizes in those videos. And it was really an interest of mine to make sure that yoga became, Kundalini yoga was remained accessible, remained diverse and equitable and all of those things that really allow us to do a lot of ancestral healing because it was, an, it was a fair representation of who was practicing yoga. And so just around that time, January, I was making plans. And then this whisperings of this pandemic got even louder. And then it came to be that in March, we were all ordered, all businesses were ordered to shut down here in Canada. And I had a very tough decision to make. Number one, we were required to close. So there wasn't an idea of keeping the studio open, but rather which platform was going to be the host of our ongoing classes. And it became very clear to me that the yoga community was going one of two ways. They were closing and not doing anything else. Um, number two was that they were going on Zoom and and really catering to their local communities, keeping their students connected and practicing by way of Zoom. And then I looked around and I thought, I think there's something else. And by that time, this channel, Yoga Vision Online, had already grown to about mm, 16,000 subscribers. And I thought, you know, there's a ready audience. It's much bigger than this local community that I live in. Anybody who is local, who wants to participate, that's an easy reach for them. They just go onto to YouTube. Um, and then I started. And in the beginning, we started with one, two, three classes a day. We went live often. 
Um, teachers came, teachers went, and then it really came down to all of you really loving Kundalini yoga. And so that became the main focus. And so all the teachers who were there who are participating in Kundalini yoga, we started to really amp up our teachings. And that's where all of you came in and closed the loop. I remember there was one day when I was down in my basement apartment and feeling a little miserable about having to be teaching from my basement apartment, missing my community, missing the idea of being in a studio together live. And I happened to finish teaching and shouted out intuitively, hey, if you want to get in touch with me and let me know how these classes are going for you or any ideas for next steps or next, next videos, just shoot me an email. And I left my email, love.yogavision at gmail.com. That's my personal email, comes directly to me. And the next morning, my inbox was full. And I thought, wow, this, this is the kind of impact that these teachings should be having. And this lets me know that not only is it important for me, but it's also important for all of you. And it's a way to connect. And it's still a community. Even though it's vast and it's wide, we can still feel connected and part of, um, part of a bigger picture, the vastness of Kundalini Yoga. And also, truth be told, I was so delighted to find other people who love the practice as much as I did. And I do. And so that gave me a green signal. Because at the time, I realized that yoga, yoga studios were really going to have to pivot a lot in order to continue to make money, to, to profit, to grow in a time where our numbers were restricted, our protocols for cleaning were really heightened. There seemed to be no protection from any other um, agencies who are coming to make sure that we were viable or profitable or that we were maintaining our mental sanity. And so I made um, a really tough decision. And that was based on all of you, all of you supporting the channel. And I decided that, you know, it was a good time. It was a high time to close the studio and focus more on what I could offer here on this channel. Um, no barriers everywhere worldwide. People be able to tune in and have access to really good quality teaching. And also it was meaningful and important to me and it allowed us to connect and be together. And from there, my teacher training has grown and numerology consults have grown. And so I could wholeheartedly say thank you. Thank you for making my YouTube journey so, so spectacular and in some ways quite effortless and for tuning in and supporting the work, liking and commenting and sharing and talking about, commenting below about all the things that have really turned you on to Kundalini Yoga and what the benefits are. So from my heart to yours, thank you. I know this is um, an equal partnership. Whatever I produce, you have to like in order for us to continue to grow. And I'm so glad for your feedback and so glad for your comments. So here you go. That's a little of the backstory behind how this YouTube channel came to be. We are now at 35,000 subscribers. So in a very short amount of time, doubled our doubled our numbers, doubled the community. And I think what you're going to see in the future is even more content, different kinds of content, so that you can keep tuning in, practicing, and loving your life. Until next time, my name is Salima, yoga therapist. Like and follow and subscribe. Bye for now.